what is it with these pit bulls that makes them what they are? I've heard it said that they fight with a passion or with a fury of a primeval challenge hidden deep within their minds, a challenge called from the darkened shadows of a time best forgotten, a time before love or hate. A grown American pit bull terrier can pull weights of just under one ton. It has the strongest jaw muscles of any domestic animal. Once it locks on, it'll never let go. And with its terrier instinct, when it attacks, it doesn't give up. Pound for pound, they're the strongest dog in the world. They are a uh, bull terrier and have a bull terrier temperament. As we can see, one of them's got a hold of the, uh, the bear's got a hold of him. Just uh, over ten years ago, Canadian ex-wrestler Ed Reed introduced the American pit bull terrier to Britain. His home in Streatham, South London, is a shrine to the new breed of dog that he had seen on his travels. Uh, what attracted me to them was not only were they such a tough dog, but on getting to know the people who owned them, that fought them, and finding out what a fabulous dog they are, aside from that, like a people dog. They were so intelligent, so friendly, lovable, and all these qualities, and like I say, highly intelligent, that I thought, like, to me, this, this is, there's no dog like him. And so from that time onwards, I became interested in this kind of dog. The American Pit Bull Terrier can be a loyal family pet, but some authorities believe that its very nature makes it a dangerous animal. The Kennel Club has refused to recognize the breed as legitimate. The Metropolitan Police have expressed concern about the type of owner that it attracts. And now, the RSPCA, aware of the revival of dog fighting in the capital, are having secret talks with the Home Office in an attempt to control ownership. Tonight, the London programme tells you the story of the American Pit Bull Terrier. We uncover the underworld in the dogfighting network in the capital, and we ask, is this dog a companion or a potential killer? Uh, these dogs uh, make very good guard dogs, uh, and they're a very loyal dog to their owners. I trust these dogs. I trust these dogs with your children. My particular dogs. That is how much faith I have in these. If they're brought up correctly, as I've uh, mentioned, there, there's no problem. The American Pit Bull Terrier's origins go back two centuries. It combines the strength of the original bulldog that could bring down a 2,000 pound bull for the butcher and the biting and holding instinct of the terrier. Settlers in America realized that they had also created a dog that could fight in a pit for their amusement. Its fighting instincts were heightened through breeding. The result is a dog which some say has a Jekyll and Hyde mentality, a characteristic acknowledged even by defenders of the dog. They have evolved as a fighting dog. Uh, in my opinion, this is the negative side of their character. They, are, they make ideal family dogs. If they're brought up correctly and sensibly by sensible people, they make good indoor guard dogs. They need training like all dogs, and they need discipline. But they will act and react to the way that uh, people train them. Uh, there is the old saying about uh, there are no bad dogs, just bad owners. And basically, with this breed, I would say that, is, uh, that rings true. Uh, more, more so. It's a fact that the dog's darker nature and its reputation as a fighter have attracted a number of bad owners. One RSPCA officer, originally working in the States, foresaw the problems the pit bull would bring with it to this country. Well, I became extremely worried very quickly because uh, I'd known the history of the breed in America. Um, I hadn't really received a lot of information beforehand that the breed was coming was becoming popular in this particular country. So after filing my initial report, I then wrote back to the States to my colleagues who I had uh, not long ago worked with, asking them to forward me uh, necessary information about the background of the breed and the problems that were then uh, beginning to uh, come to light all over America, from the very deep south and the west. Because at that particular time, California was in the process of trying to uh, upgrade the dogfighting laws, and it was mainly uh, known that pit bull terriers were mostly involved in that. Eachus was right. London has become the center of a brutal sport. An underground network of dogfights has grown in the capital.
viewers may find the following footage disturbing. This film is from one of the first dogfights in England in Potter's Bar. The London programme tracked down one of the spectators, John, now a self-confessed ex-dogfighter. It was like a motorbike shed thing. We went down there and the two dogs met and they had it off and they were rumbling for about 40 minutes. Well, for the first 20 minutes, our dog was getting all his stick. And we thought, well, it's teaching them a lesson anyway, won't go back for more. But after that, he started to come on strong and he finished up. He beat the dog in the 40 minutes. So that was it. That was us, that was the initiation and after that we just other people started contacting us through the dog being a champion, much not with other ones, so we went to a few places. We went down to South London for one, two. Uh, East London, we went all over. Fighting has spread throughout the country and become well organized as well as lucrative. We arrived there, and I, think, I thought it was like one of them drive-in movies. There was pit bulls and different kennels all separated from one another. That was about, there was about 20, 30 people there. And there was only me and my mate as usual up from London. And uh, everybody, oh, there's, oh, must have been about three or four grand changing hands. And that day, well, we had 700 of their own money on our dog, and the amount of side bets. When we were there, that was, that was the original stake for the dogs. But when we were up there, we put another 400 pound on with different people just that were there betting on the other dog. We were taking all comers bets. Betting on dog fights can be high. And those involved in this barbaric sport can make a lot of money. We were talking for our biggest one, as I said earlier, it was five grand up front plus side bets, so you can take it from there yourself, and that's only one fight. And that's only us. You've got the other people there as well, they're all betting. So you're talking good 10 grand a fight, maybe, which isn't bad, you can't sort of laugh at it. When I won the money, like we, we got a deposit, it gave us a deposit for the house, so we were buying a house, caravan, boat, nice car, clothes, eating in the nice restaurants. Generally enjoyed the money. With so much money at stake, fights are run to strict rules. You face the dogs off to one another, like, you know what I mean? Just let them go and they dive straight across, and they just keep snapping in. Oh, I'll tell you what, some of them dogs have got so many moves, it's unbelievable. Some of them are down there for the leg and the other one's trying to get the throat and... Oh, it's really good. And then, once they split, you know what I mean? If a dog turns away, they call it off. That's the end of round one, say. So then they take the dog over the corner man. That's, like, that was my job. I was corner man that day. And there's betting going on all the time. Well, this is in your, sorry, your hands going up like this, taking that bet and that bet. And then, when the dog's split up, you wipe them down and everything, like, you know what I mean? And if your dog's the one that's turned away, you've got to let your dog, you get a minute to get your dog ready to face up again. And the guy that's in the ring, he's going, shake him, shake him, shake him. And different, whatever gets your dog going, you sort of go and gee him up. It's just like, say you're in the ring, you're boxing, and it's like you've got your second there every time the seconds are out, like, you know what I mean? Go on, you're in there, you're doing well, you're doing well, good boy, and you're petting them, you're, you're giving them all the encouragement the dog wants, and all you see is his tail wagging, so you know he's happy, you know what I mean? Good as gold. John wanted to remain anonymous for fear of retribution from those in the fight world. Fights can go on as long as two hours. The white dog in this video died in the pit, yet dog fighters maintain the injuries sustained are superficial and easy to treat. And then they can put stitches in. It's just like you're stitching up a jacket or something like that. Just get a good needle, good bit of gut, put it through, tie a knot, stitches in. Three days later, you just take the stitch out. Medals is when your dog's been scarred. Like the scars there, you've got to call that a medal. The dog wears out with pride. It's, it's like getting awarded the VC or something, you know what I mean? 
That's poppycock, absolute rubbish. Uh, the dogs are fed sometimes with drugs which heighten the dogs and, and it also reduces uh, bleeding and so on. But if you saw some of these dogs after the fight, your, your mind would be right with me. But the dogs suffer horrific injuries. And of course there are dogs killed occasionally in the ring, in the pit. And other dogs are so severely injured they can't be treated at all. More and more vets in London, like Trevor Turner, whose surgery is in Ealing, are being asked to treat American pit bull terriers with fighting injuries. What we see are lacerations, puncture wounds around the face, ears, head, and sometimes uh, pretty extensive wounds. But again, these dogs, um, we've had one or two brought in that uh, have come in under their own steam. That I think any other breed would have been carried in because uh, they've lost a lot of blood and yet they're still up and standing and looking for more. I had one uh, way back before Christmas that had half its jugular hanging out as it, it arrived and that dog survived. Just, you know, it's just unbelievable. Um, and one wonders really how much pain these dogs really feel. The clandestine nature of dog fighting made up of Adverts of fighting stock and underground magazines with anonymous match reports makes it difficult to smash. But because of the obvious cruelty and recent escalation of dog fighting, the RSPCA has set up a special investigation unit which aims to do just that. Increasingly, their work pays off. This is exclusive footage of their biggest raid following months of undercover work. Seventeen men were convicted for dogfighting, bringing the three-year total to 100. In the last six months alone, 11 men have been convicted after raids in West Drayton and Stockwell. I've said for some years now that this dogfighting is the sport of villains. Um, I haven't changed my mind. In fact, at a recent court case, when the stipendary magistrate was sat listening, we were able to show um, a video of the fight. And I saw physically the stipendary change. We played him also um, sound recordings of voices. And he did make a comment which I thought was very astute. And he said, this shows me the type of people we're dealing with. And it did because of the fight system, of the words they were using when they were talking, of the way they were looking at their dogs and saying different things which they didn't care. They would disregard their dog, really, as long as it's winning. Um, if it loses, they don't want to know it anyway. If it's not game, and that's the word used, if it's not uh, willing to fight anymore, then they don't want the dog. Um, it's either killed or, or disposed of in some way. If it's a game dog, they'll breed from it. They only want to do it to heighten the breed and, and uh, possibly make more money at fights. The RSPCA dates the revival of dog fighting to the introduction of the American pit bull to this country. They and many others believe that Ed Reed, the man responsible for their import, should use his influential position openly to condemn and discourage fighting. His books and magazines seem to do the exact opposite. His advertisements for stock mention ROM, Register of Merit, meaning that the dog's offspring have won three times in the pit. Aren't you, in some way, allying yourself and giving credibility and some support to that whole business by using the same terms as the people who engage in dogfighting? That's a question of interpretation. Uh, I think that most of the people in Pitbull who read that, uh, they interpret it the way I intended it, which is I breed some bloody tough dogs. They're not only smart, they're not only typical, but they're tough. And if they did get into a tussle, they'd probably do all right. Now, I think anybody who owns this kind of dog likes to think that if the dog did get into a tussle, he could take care of himself. But it does weaken your claim to abhor dog fighting in all circumstances somehow. Well, I would say that I guess you just have to believe whatever you like. I still maintain uh, that uh, if I breed some exceptionally tough dogs, I do. And the people that, uh, if they did use them for fighting, 
uh, it wasn't with my knowledge, yes, uh, that I recognize uh, ultimately that if, if, you, if you do want to interpret uh, that I'm upholding dog fighting because I have, this dog has been uh, given recognition as an ROM, then be that as it may. But you're a man, and I have no doubt about this, who loves these dogs. Shouldn't you be down like a ton of bricks on anybody who in any way engages in activities that injures them? That's a very difficult question, too. It's taken me a long time to go into it. I don't know if I can answer it very, very briefly. But shouldn't you? Shouldn't you be lashing out at these people? I, I don't make life easy for them. I, I don't support them. I don't attend uh, their uh, events. And so on this uh, isolated case where this dog has been given this award, then I allow it to be recognized as such. You shouldn't really, should you? That's debatable. That's debatable and open to interpretation. When I saw the dogs being used... Uh, but what's not open to interpretation is Mr. Reed's belief that the dogs enjoy fighting. And you probably have access to some film on dog fighting. You must have. I have seen it. Okay, okay. It is a vile um, business. Well, it is a rough business. It is a rough business. No. It's more than rough. It's uh, vile. It's it, disgusting. Okay, okay. Let's say that. But uh, this is this is a, a most paradoxical thing. You, you cannot understand. You've got to see it. And I'm going to ask you, whatever film you get a chance to look at, and everybody in this room who's listening, this sounds paradoxical entirely. You look at those dogs' tails. Well, ask yourself. I've seen it too many times. Sure, they're wagging. They're wagging it. You ask even a vet. The dog is enjoying himself. He wags his tails. These dogs have been bred for this for a long time, boy. A long time. And they bloody love it. They just love it. Mr. Reed's passion for the dogs has proved infectious. Their strength and ferocity have made them into a cult, the ultimate macho dog, and breeders have flooded the market. Reed knows a 4,000 bred from his original two dogs, and it's estimated that there are many thousands more. The American Pit Bull Terrier is now becoming a popular household pet, and it's a fact that it's no less predictable than the Alsatian or the Great Dane, say. But it's locking teeth and jaws, it's natural ferocity, and it's strength all mean that when a pit bull terrier does attack, it can do far more damage than any other domestic animal. Already there are growing numbers of cases of people being savaged by American pit bull terriers. 18 months ago, 16-year-old Karen Noble was working in kennels. I wasn't really concentrating on much except for, you know, to scream to somebody to get the dog off me. But all I could hear was him growling. And that when I actually went into the cage, first of all, I could, you know, see its eyes. The first thing I saw was its eyes. You know, first it looked sort of, you know, normal, innocent. And then suddenly its eyes seemed to change completely. Just sort of, you know, wild. I thought, what's happening? And it suddenly went for my arm. And all I could see was its eyes. And I've never seen a, you know, a dog's face look like that before. It's just like, you know, to kill me. It's really bad. So we had, you know, this thing said in its mind, you know, kill, kill. Karen was in a wheelchair for three weeks with over 40 stitches following the attack. 40-year-old Michael Gordon is another victim. Well, first of all, my friend came to knock for me and both, both of us went down to the arcade and then a group and then some more um, people came along as well and then we were playing the arcade games and all that. And then afterwards, a little while after, the dog got loose right, and it came upstairs and it jumped over the counter and all my other friends saw it, but I didn't see it because, like, the dog came from the behind, behind of me, and I didn't see it, and so the dog went for my leg. So he just grabbed onto my leg. Okay. Michael will bear the marks for the rest of his life. In both cases, the dogs concerned were put down following attacks, but they could just be the beginning. In America, where the dogs have been around for a lot longer, attacks like this one, seen on local news recently, are becoming commonplace. Fundamental question, who's the menace, the animal or the owner? Benjamin's coming out, so if you don't want to get bitten, you'd better get out of here. Come on. 
Officer Powell, badly bitten on her hands and chest, had been sent to investigate a region. Since 1983, uh, there have been 42 confirmed deaths reported in America uh, by breeds of dogs, from Mongol dogs to Great Danes. But out of those, there have been 26 reported deaths from 1983 to 88 uh, involving pit bull terriers. And they were confirmed deaths by pit bull terriers. And surprisingly enough, and this is what worries me about the breed, is it wasn't known fighting dogs from the pits that were involved in the, the death of someone. Um, these are supposedly pets of the house, uh, companion animals, uh, or a sort of a guard dog for the premises. And the people that were, were, were killed uh, were mainly family members of very close friends that had come to the house. Uh, and the sort of age group of these people was from only a few days old uh, to months old or up to five and six years of age. And then there was a long gap and then it seemed to attribute to the very old age pensioners. Uh, one can obviously see why because both those particular age groups would find it very difficult uh, to fend that type of a dog off. The violence of the pit bull's attack combined with its loyalty to its owner make it dangerous in the wrong hands. In New York, they've just announced a ban on the sale or purchase of the dog, not simply because of dog fighting or random attacks, but because police are encountering them during investigations into drug offences. We've discovered evidence that the same is beginning to happen here. Dogs are being used in this country, the same as they were in America, for crack factories. Uh, that's fairly well self-explanatory. Uh, sort of factory replace where they uh, are dealing in, in crack and they want the dogs to protect the premises, uh, as well as the transportation of, of drugs or crack to a small quantities of one place to another. Uh, and they are extremely nasty dogs and that's why they're being used. Now RSPCA and police officers conducting investigations over here daily face threats on their lives. Many of them were afraid to appear on this program. But the London program has seen a confidential internal report commissioned by the police which states that there's a rumor now that some of the people involved in the sport are also involved in the importation of drugs. It's not beyond the bounds of possibility that someone in the near future may be seriously hurt. That report was commissioned in late 1983 and in the last year seven Met officers were attacked in the line of duty. Trainer Trevor Mayer illustrates what these dogs can do. Using a victim with protective clothes, he trains pit bulls for security work. He's a reputable expert who bets his clients before training their dogs. Oi, stand still, I want to worry you. Stand still. Kiss up, sit still, I want to worry you. I'll release my dog, I'll release my dog. Stand still. Stand still, hold it. Hold it, mate. Ah! Ah! However, Trevor is concerned that other trainers may not be so careful. Does it um, worry you that some of these trainers may be putting dogs that have killed, maimed people, in the hands of people who are completely unscrupulous or sometimes stupid mm. about their use? Yeah, it does worry me because at the end of the day, um, it will all come back to me. One way or another, it will all come back to me being an American Pit Bull Terrier specialist, as you could say. When you say you'll come back to you, how, what do you mean? Um, they'll start to get a bad name. There'll be a lot more press cuttings of the, the breed, biting people, doing this, doing that. And then I'll be recognized as a pit bull. Yeah, he's a trainer, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's one he trained. Keep away from him, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just hope he doesn't go like that. I really do hope. Leave! 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 Despite Trevor's concern for the future, the dog is a slave to the job man created it to do. Even the best ones go out of control. During the making of this program, Trevor Mayer's otherwise well-trained dog went out of control and attacked our producer.
Fortunately, he was unharmed. The blood on his trousers is from the dog where it had bitten its own lip. The pit bull was bred to fight. Its ferocity, along with the fear of it falling into the wrong hands, have led the RSPCA to call for tighter controls on ownership. I know it's difficult, but it's not as difficult uh, as it will be if thousands of these dogs are left to breed and so on, because the problem will be far greater. At least if they're registered and, and uh, identified in some way, we will have some sort of control over the breeding of them. I would hope, anyway. For some, even registration is not enough. David Cavill of Battersea Dogs Home refuses to take stray or injured pit bulls. For him, they're just too great a risk. I just cannot see that a dog that has been specifically bred to fight and to guard and to attack fits in with what we in this country would consider to be the normal nature of uh, uh, an animal that should be a help and a companion to us. Battersea already has the um, uh, policy that American pit bull terriers, if brought in, will be put to sleep. And reluctant though I would be to put any dog down that was in other ways healthy, I do believe that it is probably better for our society and for the dogs themselves in the long run. Despite RSPCA and police concern, there have been no official moves to control, register or ban the American pit bull terrier. There's no way of telling how many pit bulls there are in London. And more importantly, there's no way of checking who owns them. We asked the man who brought them to Britain how he felt. Do you ever regret bringing them into this country, knowing that that kind of problem may arise? Well, I, yes, it bothers me. I do regret it when I hear about these cowboys and these kind of man-eaters that we call them in pit bull circles. We call them a man-eater. There aren't many. But one is too many. I think there's a growing number of these people that uh, breed the dogs, like I say, indiscriminately. They don't give a damn. It's not American pit bull terrier they love, it's what, the, what they can make out of the American pit bull terrier. It's like giving a person a 357 Magnum, loading it and cocking it, and handing it to him, and saying, well, I don't think you'll shoot anybody. Uh, it, it is just not the breed of dog for this particular country and certainly not the breed of dog for uh, metropolitan areas where you have masses of people, uh, masses of other animals. Something is going to happen that in the end they're going to say, I told you so. American pit bulls were brought here 10 years ago by this former breeder. He says that anyone who buys a pit bull should be aware that they've been bred as a fighting dog. Well, I have no regrets on bringing these dogs into the country. I do think it's sad uh, that like people, I mean, somebody must have brought the Rottweilers into this country. Somebody must have brought German Shepherds into this country, etc., uh, etc. Et so I don't feel that I did anything wrong. The government has been considering what to do about dangerous dogs since last summer. A number of proposals have been tabled, which include forcing owners to muzzle dogs, a new offence of letting a dog be dangerously out of control, additional powers for the police to destroy uncontrolled dogs, and a fixed penalty system for owners whose dogs are without identification tags. But when the RSPCA meet the Home Secretary later this week, they'll tell him that unless the proposals include a registration scheme, the government's measures will be half-baked. In essence, what we say is that none of the new measures that we've seen would prevent any of the attacks that have happened to date, nor any that are likely to happen in the future. At least two people have been killed in attacks by uncontrolled dogs in the last two years. Many more have been injured. Children are most at risk. Dog was taken away to be destroyed. The attacks have led to calls from the Home Secretary to ban dangerous dogs. I think one should look upon the danger of dogs in various categories. And there are two breeds that are trained for fighting and killing, and they should be looked at quite separately. And we are prepared to consider a ban of those breeds, provided that a ban can be made to work. American pit bulls were brought to Britain in the late 1970s. They now number over 10,000. They were originally bred as fighting dogs, 
and in the United States, they're thought to have killed at least 27 people. The man who brought the pit bull to Britain says that anyone who buys the animal should be aware of the danger. I have no regrets on bringing these dogs into the country. I do think it's sad uh, that like people, I mean, somebody must have brought the Rottweilers into this country. Somebody must have brought German Shepherds into this country, uh, etc., etc. So I don't feel that I did anything wrong. Dog fights such as this are illegal. And since last summer, the government has been considering new legislation on dangerous dogs. Proposals tabled include forcing owners to muzzle dogs, additional powers for the police to destroy uncontrolled dogs, and fines for owners whose dogs don't have identification tags. Tonight, Kennel Club officials met the Home Secretary. Tomorrow, the RSPCA will tell him they want a national dog registration scheme introduced. Humanely destroyed. Whitehall sources suggest that the entire pit bull breed and this Japanese tozer will be removed from Britain. From midnight tonight, it will be illegal to import any such dog. The recent spate of attacks on the public by pit bulls has prompted the government to act. I believe that everyone in the country will have been shaken by the attacks over the last uh, few weeks, and particularly the horrific attack on Ruxana Khan at the weekend. I have discussed this matter with my right honourable friend, the Home Secretary, and we are persuaded that urgent action must be taken. I can, I can tell the House that from midnight tonight, I can tell the House from midnight tonight, the import of dogs bred for fighting, such as the American pit bull terriers and Japanese tozers, will be banned. Tomorrow afternoon, the Home Secretary will clarify some of the government's plans. This is likely to mean that at least 10,000 dogs will be destroyed. Home Office sources say it's not yet clear how such measures will be enforced. But the RSPCA says a cull is not the solution. We do not believe that uh, the destruction of any category or particular breed of animal uh, is an appropriate response. Rather, we would seek to eliminate the breed through the neutering uh, of those animals, through the promotion of the responsible ownership of all dogs uh, across the board. Out of the small number of pit bulls that have been rogue dogs in these incidents with the child and so on, these are not typical representatives of the breed. But consequently, it seems that the breed entire is going to pay the price. And I don't see what kind of justice that is. Customs officers will enforce the import ban. Anyone caught trying to smuggle a banned dog into the country faces an unlimited fine and up to seven years in prison. A Home Office spokesman also confirmed that more legislation to control all dogs, especially large breeds like Rottweilers, Alsatians and Dobermans, will follow in the autumn. The most recent victim of a pit bull attack, six-year-old Rakshana Khan, is recovering in hospital. Cards, flowers and toys have been sent in by well-wishers, but her mother says she may never get over her ordeal. She's still in pain, you know, and she keeps telling me all the time that she knows what happened. And she dreams about it as well, you know, and she's crying in her dreams. These latest proposals are the first radical steps by the government to eradicate illegal dog fights encourage responsible dog ownership and reduce... Class, Mr Major insists, pay rises... A reminder... Government is to push through legislation to ban and put down all dogs bred for fighting. That would include American pit bull terriers, the sort of dog which savaged Roxana Khan at the weekend, Japanese tozers and banned dogs. Labour said tonight Rottweilers should also be on the list. They would be put down humanely. The Home Secretary, Mr Baker, is to make a statement in the Commons tomorrow. The import of pit bull terriers and tozers has already been banned as of midnight tonight. Mr Major told MPs such dogs had no place in our homes. This owner brought his two pit bulls down to the Commons today to try to prove that many were friendly and safe and to try to persuade MPs not to ban the breed. But it was too late. The horrendous pictures over the past three days of the injuries suffered by six-year-old Roxana Khan when she was attacked by a pit bull in Bradford had shocked the nation and the Prime Minister. From midnight tonight, the import of dogs bred for fighting, such as the American pit bull terriers and Japanese tozers, will be banned. Yeah. But it is clear, such dogs have no place in our homes. Yeah. Mr Major may also have been shaken by so many stories in the newspapers demanding swift and effective government action. 
He called in the Home Secretary, and the two agreed the government must be seen to take appropriate action. In the Commons tomorrow, Mr Baker will announce two important changes to the law. Dogs like these, dogs bred to fight and kill, will be rounded up. The government intends to take the powers to have them killed humanely, though there may be as many as 10,000 now in Britain. We do not believe that uh, the destruction of any category or particular breed of animal uh, is an appropriate response. Rather, we would seek to eliminate the breed through the neutering uh, of those animals, through the promotion of the responsible ownership of all dogs uh, across the board. I don't like to see what I saw on the television this morning, that, that they want to destroy the dogs, you know, just willy-nilly just destroy them. I don't think it's fair, because if it was a human being that was in trouble, right, well, that human being then would go to prison if he did wrong. Not every human being should go to prison, only those that do wrong. Same with the dog. They shouldn't be put to sleep for nothing. We are quite happy that the dogs are, the American Pit Bull Terrier and the Toza are banned from this country. Um, we do not agree with the wholesale slaughter of what I understand is termed dangerous dogs. And our concern is who is going to define what dangerous dogs are. Today, Mr Major specifically mentioned the Japanese Toza. The owner of the only one in Britain insists it's gentle. ...distinction between ferocious animals trained for fighting and ordinary... ...faction of the dogs. He said neutering the animals would not be enough. Animal welfare groups and dog owners say they will fight. One minute, pit bull terriers and dogs like them can be totally docile, the Home Secretary told the Commons today, and complete killers, Mr Baker said the next. That was why they were so dangerous and why the owning, importing and breeding of such dogs would be banned. It is essential to rid the country of the danger from such dogs. As my right honourable friend said in the House yesterday, they have no place in our homes. It has been put to me that it would be possible to make these dogs safe by neutering them. I am advised that this policy is unlikely to be effective. If that will not be effective, the ban on dogs bred for fighting will mean sadly that these types of dogs have to be put down. It was the weekend attack on Roxana Khan, the latest in a long line of similar incidents involving not just dogs like pit bulls, bred to fight, but other breeds like Rottweilers and Alsatians, which has forced the government to take action and Mr Baker to change the views he expressed just four days ago. If you actually ban a breed, provided you can define it, and there's difficulties with the crossbreeds, but if you, even if you could define it, you would have to kill all the existing dogs, and that means taking them from their homes, or else you'd have to destroy all their puppy, puppies to stop them breeding. And these are very difficult policies to carry through. But now by bringing in a pit bull ban which goes for the dog owners, and trying to couple it with new laws to deal with the wider problem of attacks by dogs like Rottweilers, which are not bred simply for fighting, the government has run the risk of appearing not to have thought things through. The point was made to the Home Secretary in the House that only a quarter of the attacks in London last year involved pit bulls. And if, if he believes that it's adequate to tackle a quarter of the problem, then many people in the country will feel that the government is falling sadly short. Labour called Mr Baker's announcement disappointingly vague, especially on what controls there should be on dogs apart from pit bulls. He should have said there are some dogs which certainly shouldn't be destroyed, but ought to be kept in conditions of safety. He should have imposed an obligation on owners when they have those dogs in public places, to keep them under control, certainly on a lead, probably muzzled. He should have required the owner of those dogs to take out insurance to protect people who might be attacked by them. All those things are necessary. All those things can only be done if the government introduces a national dog register. In fact, under questioning in the House, Mr Baker had promised some new legal action to deal with the wider problem of attacks by dogs like Rottweilers. They and other dogs, um, which do attack sometimes people or other dogs, uh, would be covered by other general legislation, other general provisions, namely to make it a criminal offence not to keep your dog properly in a public place. And also giving um, the court powers to issue an order um, specifying how the dog should be controlled, namely a muzzle in a public place, a specific dog. But although the opposition believe that the government hasn't still acted toughly enough, some Tory MPs believe that the government has gone too far. Like the RSPCA, they believe that the idea of neutering dangerous dogs should be looked into further. Mr Baker says he will do that, but it's clear that he does not believe that that is the answer to what is a very serious problem. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster.
As Michael Brunson said, the RSPCA has accused the government of overreacting. They say plans to eradicate certain breeds of dog are inappropriate and said they wouldn't cooperate with them. Many dog owners who say would be affected by the ban have said that they'll resist it. David Britton breeds pit bulls. He has nine puppies. Six have already been sold in spite of recent publicity, two this morning. Breeders and owners, he says, won't accept losing their dogs without a fight. Well, I've got six months to find a place to hide my dogs. That's what he's given me, six months uh, to maybe organise something, a protest, maybe organise a rally with every pit bull owner and their dogs so he can stroke the dogs and see for himself they wouldn't hurt him. Brian Morgan says the pit bull breed has been singled out unfairly. I try and hide him for as long as possible because he's a loving dog. He's not violent at all. The government says neutering won't work. Many vets disagree. A fairer solution would be to neuter and have a, a compulsory muzzling policy along with severe penalties for dogs that do bite, possibly third-party insurance. Owners are also angry that Rottweilers and Alsatians have been excluded. Joan Thurkettle, ITN, East London. Home Secretary Kenneth Baker confirmed that ownership of dogs such as pit bull terriers will be banned. And he said if neutering proved ineffective, they would be destroyed. Nick Knowles reports from Deal with a story that typifies the terror that such dogs arouse. Today's decision could finally settle a feud that's been running for months in Levers Road Deal. It centres on number 54. The owners have a female pit bull terrier, a family pet, a lovely dog according to them. Neighbours say it's killed several cats and will sooner or later take the life of a child. If you could have seen the way that that dog actually just went for the cat and, you know, what it done to it, it was absolutely horrifying. I mean, if a child like mine is in the privacy of their own garden playing with a little kitten and a dog comes over like that, who is it going to get? If she's got hold of the kitten, it's just going to go through her. And, you know, you've got to try to protect your children. But the dog's owners say the animal has only killed two cats and injured one other. They point out that their own children can play happily with the dog and its pups and insist the dog wouldn't hurt anyone. I have took her for a walk and she's seen a cat and she's jumped for it and pulled my arm out so I can't even take her out no more. She's too strong. If she sees a cat, she's got to go and get that cat. It's just cats. She's friendly with dogs. But the next door neighbours say the dog has tried to get at their child through the garden fencing. He crawled over, lifted himself up on the fence, and the, the dog came straight out of the shed. Ground. Just got we just picked him up in time before the actual dog's kiss came to his fingers. Police say there is little they can do until the dog attacks a human. But today's announcement in Parliament could change all that. Well, as always. <laughs>